And now it's time for I Hear You, the part of our show where Jack Worthing, that's me, answers your letters and questions about our life in Wellington Wells. And today's first letter is from Rupert Shrivener of 12 Spanker Lane. Mr. Shrivener asks, Uncle Jack, yeah, <laughs> that's me, is it possible to take too much joy? Well, Mr. Shrivener, it is possible, but you really have to work at it. You have to take a great deal of joy before you experience any toxic effects. Joy is quite safe in the short term, and you can take up to 10 pills per day if you're a man of average weight. However, there are side effects, as we all know. Joy not only makes you happy, it suppresses bad old memories. If you take too much, it may temporarily suppress memories that you actually need to get around. Do you have trouble identifying the people in your house, and yet they seem quite friendly and affectionate? <laughs> Do you find yourself wondering exactly what your house looks like and how to get to it from uh, wherever you are? Does it seem as if the shops and the streets have all been moved around behind your back, and the map that you have in your head of your environment doesn't quite match the one in your memory. Well then, you may have taken rather too much joy. It might be best to ask a friend to take you home so you can sleep it off. <laughs> All right, good. This one is from Royston Farrell of Meadfold Passage. Dear Mr. Worthing, well, there's no need to call me Mr. Royston. We're all friends here, aren't we? <laughs> and besides, Mr. Worthing is my father. <laughs> anyway, um, my question is, writes Mr. Farrell, what's all this talk about a joy spiral? Dear Mr. Farrell, the so-called joy spiral is an imaginary syndrome in which you take too much joy, then you forget you've taken your joy, so you take more joy, and then you forget that you've taken that, and so on, and so on, and so on. But Mr. Farrell, I can assure you that no such thing exists as a joy spiral. I mean, you might as well believe in the Tooth Fairy or Santa Claus or those people who tell you that we lost the war. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Long before any such joy spiral catches hold of you, you'll probably pass out. And when you wake up, your memory will be restored. Yes, <laughs> it's true that you might be a bit confused about where things are, but any passerby will be happy to point you in the right direction. All right, Mr. Farrell. Good. Thank you for writing. And, hang on a minute. Ah, a scented envelope. <laughs> I like those. Um, and this one here is from Mrs. Joan Tamling Goggin of Shagbear Wood in central Wellington Wells. Mrs. Tamling Goggin writes, I know we beat the Germans and made them abandon our sceptred isle, but how did we do it? Didn't they have tanks? <laughs> Mrs. Tamling Goggin, thank you very much for writing. Yes, it's easy to be confused <coughs> in the events of those long-gone days, and you're right, indeed, they did have tanks. And quite a few of them. And if ever you're inside of the Victory Memorial Camp, you can see those German tanks lined up as if it were 1948. I'll tell you how we beat them. With English cleverness, English patience, and English fortitude. That's how. If you want more details, and I don't know why you'd want more details, but if you did want more, you can get a wonderful book called Our Glorious Victory by Jack Worthing. Yes, that's me. And it's available in just about every bookstore in Wellington Wells, and it's full of questions from all your favourite wartime heroes, from the generals to the common Tommy trotting through the mud. But you already know the lesson, Mrs. Tamling Goggin. Patience and fortitude. Now stop dwelling in the past and enjoy our evening. <coughs> Shine, why don't you? <laughs> well, I'm afraid we've come to the end of our time. I hope this has been informative. Tune in again tomorrow for more fascinating glimpses into the lives of your fellow citizens of Wellington Wells. This is Jack Worthing saying, cheerio, and on with your day. I'll see you soon.